Hello, uh, hello there, this is Turquoise. Um, I wanted to make a video, you guys. Um, I've been going through something pretty crucial in my mental, well mental wellness process lately, especially in the life experiences module. Uh, I practice five modules, including but not limited to the life experiences module, which in my view, in my experience, literally, can either exacerbate or cause a degree of mental disorder and I'm not a psychiatrist I can't diagnose anyone but abuse can uh, abusive environments can cause a kind of insanity in your mind you might develop a coping mechanism where you get really angry which is normal and natural because Anger is a natural response to being abused. It's a natural response to being treated badly. And I've been studying much covert abuse and uh, with and without uh, intimate abuse. I want to say it like that because I don't want to get censored by YouTube. But um, you know it starts with an S. You know what I'm talking about. But it's intimate abuse when your intimacy and libido are abused, literally messed with in your in your mind and in your body, and um, someone uh, touches you or uh, gets suggestive with you, and it can be someone you trust or someone who's a total stranger. Maybe your family or your friends or your. Uh, People you work with, people you have to deal with in your life as a child and or as an adult. And it's basically a betrayal of trust. And um, they're literally messing around with something that God gave you. Uh, your your uh, ability and your instinct and your drive to love and create. To love other people in a romantic way so you can bond with them. To have intimate relations with them so you can bond with them and, and form a family unit. Whether it's just you and you and your partner or you and your partner and eventually having children. And even if you're solo, even if you decide to live live by yourself or, or be single. Um, when you get messed with like that, it can affect how you relate to yourself and how you relate to other people and how you relate to the world at large. It can affect every part of your life. And um, I want you guys to pay attention to something because I've been having to pay attention to something lately. Rage. Getting really angry at things that should not be making me so angry. I mean, things that should be mild irritations or mild annoyances. Like when my when I'm when I'm dealing with my phone or my computer and I have loading or buffering issues, when I have trouble loading things, when things take time, when things are slow, when things are um, not working properly, and um, or when someone ghosts you or when someone uh, abandons you in your adult life or in your your life as an older person, an older child or a teenager or an adult. Um, I don't remember a lot. I don't have a total photographic memory of what happened to me when I was a child, but I remember enough. And um, it made me feel like I wasn't in control. It made me feel like I couldn't trust anyone. It made me feel like um, when people were inconsistent or untrustworthy or not honest with me, or when people left me up in the air, which will typically happen often in our lives people will make us wait waiting is a big trigger people will make us wait for things um or you know we just naturally have to wait for things like we have to wait in line we got to wait for a red light when we're driving or even when we're a passenger you know i feel like doing backseat or passenger driving and saying come on you stupid light change already you know whatever i have to hold my tongue when i'm in an uber or i'm on a bus because I hate waiting, you know, it's just intolerable, seemingly, lots of times. 
And I get even more angry when people tell me to take a deep breath. Oh my god. When I had to go take that yoga thing in treatment last week, I was fit to be hog hogtied. I was so furious. Especially when they were forcing me to go. I felt like uh, beating the crap out of that counselor. I didn't act on it, of course. Don't worry. I didn't do anything. But I had to tell him straight up, listen, I was having flashbacks in there. And if I didn't leave the room, if I didn't uh, leave the room, I was going to cause an even greater disruption. Do you want me to, do you really want me to do that? Do you want me, do you want me to end up inpatient? Do you want, do you glory in sending clients upstairs to go in the hospital? I didn't say all that, but it was kind of my attitude. And I told him the kinder, shorter version. I said, I will cause an even greater disruption if I'm forced to sit there and have flashbacks and not be able to process them. Not even be able to go outside and process them. Get a, get a drink of water. They closed the water cooler between groups because uh, an IOP because they don't want clients out there, you know, hanging out in the, at the water cooler room when there are mental health workers out there that can keep an eye on things. Are the mental health workers afraid they're not going to be able to keep order or something? If uh, too many clients go out there to get a drink of water because they're having anxiety or flashbacks during group therapy, for God's sake, especially when they decide to have a yoga class and not everybody does yoga and it can trigger people, you know, be mindful. Oh God, the, the guy had a video on that reminded me of one of my perpetrators. I had, that is another reason I had to leave. I had to ask myself and ask, ask my higher power. Um, in my mind, you know, silently, I had, I had to say to myself, how come I can't pray right now? How come I can't focus right now on my prayers? Because they were telling me I could just sit there and pray while they had their yoga. And, um, I'm like asking, asking Jesus and asking God and praying and, and going, why am I getting all freaked out about this? This should be a very harmless class. It was because of that, that guy's voice on the damn video. Excuse me, Lord, I'm cussing. Damn it. You know, being forced, damn it, and bless them, being forced to sit there and listen to a triggering voice on a fucking YouTube video during treatment and wondering if I'm going to tear my hair out and explode. Ladies and gentlemen, let me just cut this short. I'm almost eight minutes in here. If you notice, if, if you or someone you love notices that you're having uncontrollable abnormal rage, take a deep breath. I'm going to tell you to take a deep breath. Or, or maybe just look at the screen and go like this. Have I been abused? Did something happen to me that made me so angry that it's totally blowing out of proportion things that are happening in my adult or older life right now. Because chances are it might be. Might have been going on. And um, if you, again, I'm going to do disclaimer. If you, if the answer is yes, it's all right. You're normal. There's nothing wrong with you. Anger is a natural, normal Reaction, excuse me, I'm still mad. Reaction to abuse. It is a normal reaction to being feeling violated. It is a normal reaction to feeling betrayed. It is a normal reaction to being confused and upset. Because you were literally effed with. That natural, normal, beautiful part of you, human part of you, us, was violated and f***ed with. It was. And we have a right to be angry. No, we don't have a right to beat up our counselor. We don't have a right to make a scene. But we do have a right to be angry. Oh my gosh. You better go and process it somewhere in a safe place. Find someone you trust. If you're being abused right now, find someone you trust to um, maybe call, call an authority or something. And if you're not ready to do that, at least get some help. Get some therapy. Get some counseling. Either with a professional or... A pastor or someone you trust someone you know is not gonna you know re-traumatize you or abuse you some more someone you know is not gonna invalidate what you experienced 
someone you know is going to act like me and say, there is nothing wrong with you. You have a right to be angry. Even even uh, many Christians say, we have a right to be angry as long as we don't sin, as long as we don't act on it, hurt anyone else. You know, God, God will deal with it. All right. Take care, everyone. Let's process. Let's be safe. Let's deal with it. Hate the problem, not the person. I don't hate people. I don't even hate my perpetrators. But I hate school abuse. I hate it with all my heart and soul. I hate that sickness that makes people do that. And I hate what it does to us. Bye now. Please be safe. I'm going to give us all a moment before I click off. You're normal. There's nothing wrong with you. You can calm down. It's okay. If you're going through something right now where you feel like you're not in control, it's all right. You are in control. The devil will make you believe that you're not. He will. God is with you. God loves you. God did not want this to happen. God made us... God did not make abuse. The devil did. Alright. See you later.